Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We got another exciting video for today. Well, exciting for me at least, and I hope it's exciting for you guys out there too. So, we're gonna be working on Project XJ. We're gonna be putting on this massive heavy duty steel rear bumper. We got our D-ring shackles going on here. We can pull with it. We're gonna have those LED pods going in there, and hopefully it's gonna be a quick install. But first, if you guys could please smash that like button, that subscribe button as well, and also follow me on Instagram, I'd greatly appreciate it. The link will be down below us also so you can find it. But, so we're coming on over here to the rear of the vehicle. Um, as you can tell, the bumper is not on there anymore. I was able to remove it prior to painting the vehicle, so I'm gonna try to, if I find it, put in the clip like right, you know, before we get into it, so you guys can see how I removed it. It was a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I was able to come off and kind of get those side uh, plastic guards off of your low, low quarter panels. Um, and then you had the bumper here, but you also had like a plastic, but you also had a plastic piece that ran right across from here as well that prevented you from getting down in here and holding the, the, the nut and bolts. So I'm gonna go ahead and if I find it, you're gonna see that being played right now. All right, so to get started here, we're gonna be taking off these rear mounts to begin with. These are your factory ones. So, a little bit tricky situation. If they're supposed to fit, the socket size for them is gonna be a 15 millimeter. But if it doesn't fit, you're gonna need a 14 millimeter and a hammer. Because you're gonna to have to bang it on on there because it's so you know, severely corroded. So that's a good one right there up above as you can tell, I can get that socket on there nice, nice. But the one down below, you're gonna have to bash on a 14 or maybe even less, depending on what's left of the bolt. You know, you know, depending on where you are. We're up here in New England, the Rust Belt area, so we never have any luck with vehicles and I just hate it, um, absolutely hate it. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start removing the factory uh, mounts and we're gonna get back to it when we're all set and done. After we got those nasty bolts out in the back there, we actually had a really bash one as you can tell, but they're completely out now and thank God they didn't strip, they didn't snap, nothing like that. Heating up goes a long way, so everything I do now on this vehicle and any rust box, I just heat the bolts up first, it doesn't hurt at all. So the next step is we're gonna come over here. For some reason on the driver's side, this rail right here is not on there, so it must have came off or I don't know from the previous owner or whatnot, but this has to come off. As you can tell from over here, there's a rivet there, but since this is already forked up, that rivet is rotted off. But there's rivets, I'm assuming they are continue down the rail in here, but I have to remove the factory exhaust hanger first to do so. So it's on by these two bolts right here. They're 18 millimeter bolts. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna reheat those up, remove them, and hope that once this plate comes down, there's gonna be rivets up in there, so that way I can go ahead and remove that rail. If not, we're gonna have to relook th at the situation and think of something. All right guys, we we're able to remove that exhaust hanger right down in here, and it uh, looks like it was a guard for the side of the fuel tank, but I was able to lucky out that that one rivet there that I did not even need to do. I'm very fortunate that by unbolting that, this came right on out the factory rail and so that's where the rivet would have gone and it looks like it just rotted right off. If you take a look on in there, you can see how crusty it can be up here in this, in that car, holy crap. 
Man, man, oh man. Okay, so now the next step is, since we got this out of there, look at that, freaking bent. Someone must've been trying to do something there. Oh no, sometimes you buy a used vehicle, right? You don't know what the previous owner has done to it. But all right, now that those things are removed, we're gonna go ahead and move on, move on to the next step. All right guys, so the next step of this Jeep build here for the rear bumper is to put in these rails. So they go in a special way. This is your passenger and this is your driver and they face going this way. So the L-shaped hook goes towards the front of the vehicle. So the way you're gonna get them in is you're gonna tuck them in like that and you're gonna slide them on in there. And they're actually gonna seat, this is gonna seat right down behind that lip there. But before I do this, this is bare metal. And as soon as this gets worn out, it is gonna rust. As soon as it gets soft on it, it's really gonna rust. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick little break here. We're gonna paint them on up and we'll be right back. What is up guys, it's now a couple days later and this thing is looking really good after I put that rust preventive treatment on there and painted it with some that nice thick uh, tractor black um, gloss. It came out really good and it's actually really sturdy and whatnot. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue on with the build process. The next step that we have to do is slice off this ridge right here on both sides so that this can easily fit flush because it does hang out and it hangs off for a reason because it connects to a bracket on the back side of the, the rear bumper. So with the further ado, we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put it all in, we're gonna mark it on up, and we're gonna start cutting and dicing. And then what we'll, we'll do is just to prevent from rust, we'll start painting those little edges that we did cut, wait for that to dry, and then we're gonna go on ahead and continue the build process with the brackets and everything. Now we got absolutely everything bolted on and whatnot. They recommended 90 foot pounds of torque for pretty much everything. Down on the unibody rails, that was actually no problem. But coming on up to here, since it is kind of New England and it is, it is rusty, it's not like weak or anything like that. Like it's rotted. I mean, I have one rot hole here, which you can tell where it flexed pretty good and it kind of uh, bent a little bit when I was torquing down to 90 foot pounds. So, I mean, that was a little scary. We were going to town trying to, you know, torque that down and whatnot. And then coming on onto the face rails right here, I mean, it, those threads just aren't strong enough for 90 foot pounds. I mean, I, it's, maybe it's just my Jeep, I don't know. But I was able to get two down to 90 foot pounds and one down on this side. The rest, maybe like 60. What do you think, 60? Yeah, probably. I think Contour 60. So I mean, I don't know what I'm doing pulling with this thing, but you know, like you know, anything heavy. I mean, you don't pull with this anyways, anything heavy, but you, you get the point. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is they recommend putting the bumper on, bolting her up and whatnot, and then putting the LED pods in. 
last, well, I'm going to save myself probably a half hour of yelling and screaming, getting my hands um, up in there and whatnot. I'm going to do it off the vehicle. It's not really a big deal to me, so I'm going to go ahead and reverse that step. What they recommend, we're going to do it off the vehicle, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to reinstall this bumper. So let's get to it. Right, guys is completely finished except being wired up we're gonna be thinking about doing that in a different way we'll be doing that in another video but as far as to looking at it and how we put it together I you know you can see that right in this video but as far as we go it's really well built and actually pretty sturdy shakes the whole whole Jeep what I kind of wish it came with was one of these uh, the bull ring uh, covers so it doesn't keep banging into the paint and you know ruin it but I'll go ahead and I'll get that after the fact um, and then Connor kind of pointed out around these lenses here for the uh, LED lights, there's a big gap. So we're a little bit concerned about moisture purposes. But I mean, if anything happens, we just take it apart, we'll clean it up and whatnot, and we'll reseal it and put it back together. As far as the hitch, it actually fits one, a two inch one. I was kind of a little bit concerned because um, if you look right down inside here, the hole here, you can see the back molding of the bumper. And I wouldn't think that you'll be able to get one in there and whatnot, but I was able to get one in there and get the pin in there. So that wasn't a concern at all. You're not gonna be pulling much anything with this, to be honest with you, it's kind of aesthetic purposes or whatnot, uh, but maybe like a log splitter or like a little tiny utility trailer, that'll be just fine. Uh, but I mean, <sighs> Overall, this actually looks really incredible. What do you think, Contour? Yeah, looks good. I think it looks absolutely great. I love the laser cut, the RC, and the, the sides here for Rough Country. Uh, the one thing that kind of does stink that you can see the body mount kind of hangs down a little bit right here. On both sides, um, it is what it is. This is We leveled it out and everything like that, and we, we measured both on the sides here, uh, shifting and whatnot. I mean, that's what happened. It is what it is, but it looks pretty good, huh? Yeah. All right. So I this is kind of off topic, a little punched in there in the way, but I kind of forgot to mention that what we did was, you know how I said that we impacted in the nuts and we tried torquing them down and they wouldn't hold. So I kind of didn't feel comfortable at all being able to put weight on there or, or just comfortable in general if I needed to pull something or anything like that. So what we did was we got, went, got grade A bolts and we actually punched it through. They, they still threaded through what was left of the threads there. And it was kind of really loose though. And we got grade A bolts and we just clamped it right on and actually worked really good. You gotta get the long ones and actually it's probably stronger than the original threads that are there from the factory. So I thought that was a quick little, you know, thing that you should know. So that way in case you run into the same issue that I did. All right, back to the video. All right, guys, that does conclude today's video. But before we go and include this video, guys, can please support the channel by smashing that subscribe button, hitting that like, as well as follow me on Instagram at steadfast2277. I greatly appreciate it. But for now, you do whatever you want to do. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.